In a previous video, we showed you how to use the Perkin Elmer Spectrum 100 infrared spectrometer, but we didn't uh, delineate between the taking of liquids and solids. I thought that I would take that opportunity right now. There is not a lot of difference between a liquid and a solid IR in terms of protocols, but there are distinct differences that you should understand. The first thing, of course, is that we have to take a background spectrum. And we go over to our screen, and we hit scan, and we come up against this particular uh, window. And what I'm going to do is, we are using nonanoic acid, but it's the best thing to do is to get rid of that particular title, just get rid of it like that. And I go to this icon in the upper right. It always reminds me of an eye with an eyebrow. So I will uh, click on that. That's going to give us the background and we hit scan and that takes maybe one minute to do okay we're over here now it says nonanoic acid once again and I the reason it's on there by the way is because I used nonanoic acid before just to make sure that uh, everything is working properly but we're going to we're going to get rid of that and <clears throat> we're going to now take uh, our nonanoic acid which is a high boiling liquid, and we're going to put it in the very, very center of this metal disc. And really, only one drop is necessary for this. Okay. Let's close this up. Get rid of this right here. All right. Now, we're going to hit start, and it'll say Spectrum 1 scan and instrument setup, invalid file name. Well, it's an invalid file name because there is no file name. So what you have to do is you have to type in the sample. So I'm going to type in nonanoic acid. No -na -no acid. And of course, you got to spell it right, too. A-C-I-D. And that should be OK now. Okay. So now we're at the point where we can hit start. We're not going to hit background again because we've already taken a background. We're going to hit start. It says warning duplicate file name. Don't worry about that. Just hit OK and scan. It'll take a short while to go through the process of taking the infrared. And notice, by the way, that I just put one drop on there and that drop spreads out over that center portion and it covers it and that's the difference uh, that we'll see between taking an infrared of a liquid and a solid. Okay, it says here a spectrum of this name already exists. Please re-specify and I'll just say cancel and uh, we're going to use now this spectrum which is nonanoic acid by the way and so we're going to go to this particular icon here, the optimized view, which is going to increase the uh, y-axis and the x-axis of the spectrum and see how it does that. And then we're going to determine what the peaks are. So this is going to peak pick and we're going to set that at such a level that we get all the main peaks in the infrared spectrum. Okay, so we've got this and you can see right here that uh, it's a carboxylic acid. Okay, there's the OH stretch right there. There's a carbon-oxygen double bond. And there is a lot of interesting stuff for an IR spectroscopist, but not for us. So uh, what we want to do now is to go over to the uh, computer program called SDBS. You just type in SDBS on Google, and you hit the, uh, the uh, title for SDBS and it will bring up a program which you can now use to identify this particular material. I'm going to walk over here now to this computer on which we have the program SDBS already booted up to nonanoic acid. Now we will show you how to do that in a, uh, in a very few minutes when you do take the infrared spectrum and you'll notice along the side here for nonanoic acid that there are several options. In this case, we're interested in the difference between a liquid film and the IR taken in carbon tetrachloride. You'll see that we've got the liquid film up there right now. 
And that matches very well the infrared spectrum that we took. But when I put it on a carbon tetrachloride solution, you can see that it looks a little bit different. And there are reasons for that which we won't go into, but the point now is that you want the liquid film because, in fact, we're not taking a spectrum in carbon tetrachloride, we're taking the liquid film, which is just that one drop in the middle of that uh, circular disk. So this would be the infrared spectrum that we are interested in and which we're going to use to compare to the infrared spectrum that we have on the screen uh, just previously taken, okay? So, let's go back here. Okay. okay, you've seen me take the IR of a liquid, and I explained that the difference between a liquid and a solid actually is just the way the liquid and solid uh, gather up on the center of that disk. Now, with the liquid, of course, when you put a drop on there, it just spreads over it nice and evenly. But with a solid, we don't have that option. In fact, it just kind of... Forms a, forms a hill there, if you will. So I'm, I've got some um, palmitic acid. Okay. I'm going to put that, I'm gonna put that on the center of the disc. Let's get that right in the center. And there's a lot of empty space actually in this in this sample. So what we use is this arm right here. We bring it up over, and what this does is actually press the sample against the center of this disc. Okay, put that there. We don't have to put it hard. It's just just a little bit finger tight, just like that. Okay, you can't feel it obviously from the video, but uh, we'll show you how to do that. So with a solid, you're going to be using this particular arm. Okay, now we're going to walk over to the computer and we don't have to do uh, a background because we've already done that. The instrument remembers the background that you took previously. We're just going to hit scan and then start. It says warning duplicate filing but that makes sense because uh, I've tried palmitic acid uh, prior to this screening and we'll just hit scan. It'll take a few seconds then to run through it and uh, we'll get it on the screen okay it says to overwrite it, but we don't have to do that and so there we have our palmitic acid not a whole lot different from known anoic acid but you wouldn't expect it to be that much different and now we're going to do the same thing we're going to hit op view and you can see that it increases the spectrum both in a, uh, a uh, an x direction and a y direction and there it is okay and now we want to select peaks and there it is. Okay, we've acquired the spectrum. Now we're going to go over to the SDBS program and we're going to look at what's online. So here we are and I'm going to type in palmitic acid and we're going to go to the bottom here. We're going to search for it and let's see what comes up. Okay, now palmitic acid is a, a common name for hexadecanoic acid. It's a C16 acid. So here's hexadecanoic acid. And let's hit IR. And you'll notice now that we actually have three options. Nonanoic acid only gave us two. But with hexadecanoic acid being a solid, we actually have three uh, options. And uh, we're going to click KBR. Okay, so KBR was the one that uh, uh, came up. And you'll see the of the similarities between what we have on the screen and what we have on the screen over there. Now if you put New Jal Mull, if you click New Jal Mull, that's going to give you something a little bit different. Now I'm not going to explain what New Jal Mull is. That's a really old way of taking infrared spectra of solids. We don't have to do that type of thing anymore. And of course we haven't taken our infrared spectrum in carbon tetrachloride, so that's really not an option. So we're going to go back to uh, KBR disk and this now should be a very, very close match to what we have on the screen over there. All right. So this matches that. So that's the KBR setting that we want. Now let's go back over to here and we have to clean off the, the patent. Now 
we screw this up like this and I want to show you this because some students forget to do this sort of thing. We clean off, okay, so we get that cleaned off. Didn't do a really good job of that, did I? I'll, clean, I'll use it again. Use the acetone again to clean it off, okay. So we clean that off. Okay. And now we have to be concerned with any compound that might be sticking to the bottom of this this arm so we clean that off as well. Once we've cleaned that off and we've got the disc cleaned off we are in fact cleaned off and the next person who's going to take an IR spectrum is not going to be worried about uh, residue that you left from your particular spectrum and we're done.